Okay, my book is Operation Self Transformation. It's a self coaching guide book and it's a workbook that you actually work in. And it basically takes you on a journey of rediscovering who you are, but coming to the realization that you've actually self created. So, what we do, we explore the limiting beliefs you might have about yourself, um, how you've been conditioned, how experiences affected who you are, and little stories you're having about yourself, which is actually just your truth, not really the truth. And once I've sort of convinced you that you've been self-created, then the possibility exists that you could recreate yourself. So then I take you on to looking at expanding beliefs, reconnecting with concepts of what your passions are, refine, redefining your values, what are your goals, where do you want to go to. So that is the nature of the book. Um, I also do the workshops, which goes on the same basis. Uh, just a little bit about this topic that we have for today, I'm just going to share it with you. It's definitely not something that I'm very familiar with, but I have this little laugh at myself because everything I teach people comes right back at me. Because they say when you're the teacher, you, the universe will give you the lessons that you meant to be learning. So one of the first things I go like, geez, you know, this is a topic I don't know. But that's okay, because in reality you're not meant to understand everything. And you're not meant to understand the people that you connect with. Then you go, okay, that's fine. Then I don't have any pressure sitting here. And then I go and like, you know, how limiting beliefs are, you know, something like the world ending, how would it limit me? And I go, yeah, I'll spend all my money on my credit card and really have an awesome time because what the heck, why of course that the world's going to end? So I'm really like in this place of uh, not knowing what the topic's going to be about, but I'll run with it, which is really awesome. Okay, and I'm trying to think of what the book is, more insight into the book is the whole thing that you know we know knowledge is power but an application of knowledge is much more powerful so what I've really focused on the book is like having worksheets in the book that you actually work with so that you can make these changes in your life um, I call it transformational because I sort of guarantee the fact that if you took one of those skills and you embrace them in your life your life will change and I really warn people you know if you're in a home and you've got uh, continuity in your home and there's a nice vibe in the home and everybody's really comfortable and complacent in the home and you come back and you, and you decide to make changes in, in who you be, it's, it has a pro profound effect on the family. So what I'm saying, for example, if you let go of boundaries and you come home all of a sudden you say, like, I'm putting in boundaries, or I decide not to become the moaner anymore, it has a profound effect on the family. So what I always encourage you to do if you take on this journey is to actually share what you learn with your family because there's a high possibility that they'll be very threatened with it, especially the children, you know, because why is mom changing? She always came home and used to moan about the crumbs on the counter and now she's coming home and she's smiling, you know, like and she's putting attention on to me, positive attention for a change. And the thing why I tell you to do that is because your partner and your children either go with you on the journey or you could possibly lose them on the journey. What's nice about the book is that there's very simple things in it and nice examples so you could go and share them with your children. Because I'm a firm believer a lot of the things about how to create who you are, children don't get taught it at school. You know, they could go to school and have uh, an oral. You know, when you went on holiday and you got back to school, the teacher, the first thing the teacher asked you to do was to give a talk on what you did on holiday. And you know, if you're a kid and you go to the front of the class and you make a mistake, and all the children laugh at you. But at that little pinnacle point, you've got a possibility of creating a limited story about yourself. You could go like, I'll never be able to do that again. I'm not confident. And you go back and you sit in your seat and you take that story with you and you take that story into your adult life. So a lot of the stuff I really encourage people to take home and share it with their children. Because if children can realize that, you know, it's not the event that ever affects their way forward, it's how they react to an event. Um, that will pave their way forward. And I've always got this lovely story, um, which is not in the book, but I'll share it with you. Stephen Covey, one of these well-known authors, you know, Seven Habits of Effective Leaders, Seven Habits of Effective Managers, he's got these very vibrant books that are bestsellers. He has a son called Sean. So when Sean was at school, the teachers told him he'd never be able to amount to much as a writer, that he'll never be able to do what his father did. And he believed it to be the truth. And one day he sat down, and he thought, no, but maybe this is just a story. Maybe I can become a successful writer. And he wrote an awesome book called Seven Effective Habits for Teenagers. And he really did it awesomely because he did, did little stories about his dad and he little cartoons in it. And lo and behold, this book stands right next to his dad's book 
on the shelf as an international bestseller. So you can see how little things that could happen at school and even in the home can affect a child the way forward. And it's small things, if you walk around calling your child stupid, you know, your kid's going to look at you and say, why should I bother with my homework? You only think I'm stupid. Why should I study? Because you think I'm stupid. And they start believing that they're stupid and it limits them in their personal growth. If they fail at school, they often think that they are failures. I mean, I've got a friend's daughter who failed the trick and she just looked at it, she got a choice. Either go back to school or just think that you're a loser. And she challenged everybody and went back to school and then she studied at university. Because something in her made her the survivor. It's not the event that happens, it's how you choose to react to the event. Or is a self-defeating lifestyle afterwards or a self-fulfilling one which you can create? Okay, but I'm actually finished. <laughs> Lyndall, thank you very much for that. Um, uh, Lyndall is also HR manager for the uh, National Defence Force and she offers self-empowerment courses for personnel and uh, private individuals and her book is a complete self-coaching course. Um, I actually, I'm sorry we don't have them on the table here but I had some with me before this evening and I was going through her book and I thought yes, I think I'd like to work with this because we don't always have money to go and do a life coaching course and here's a complete do-it-yourself book and it is beautifully set out with all these exercises that one can work through on a daily basis so thank you very much this is truly a gift <laughs>